Welcome to video number two in this series of the Ultimate Artificial Intelligence Linux Mint Operating System. Today we are going to be installing Roop Unleashed on Linux Mint with no GPU. So we're going to be able to do deep fakes, that's face swaps on both pictures and videos. And this again is totally open source, it's free and you don't need a GPU. If you haven't seen the first video where we install Linux Mint 22, fresh install, get that baby patched up, install all the necessary stuff to follow along in the series, make sure you check that video out first and come back here. And also be sure to stick around to the end of this video where I do a quick demonstration on Roop Unleashed, swapping out my pretty face for Adam Sandler's on one of the funniest scenes in my opinion in Happy Gilmore. All right, let's jump right in. Okay, crack open a terminal. First thing you're gonna do is verify where you're at with PWD, print working directory. We are in my home directory here, so I'm gonna make a subdirectory called AI, and then I'm gonna CD into that directory. The next thing we're gonna do is go over to the GitHub page for Roop Unleashed, and I'll give you this URL, and then we'll go to code, and we'll copy that URL down, and we'll do a git space clone, and we'll paste in that URL. Now we installed Git in that first video, so if you guys haven't seen that, you'll need to go back and watch that or just do a uh, sudo apt install git. All right, so that's done. Now we have the repo clone there, so we're gonna cd into Roop Unleashed, and now we're gonna run a python3 space dash m space vemv space Roop env. So this is very important. We are now creating a virtual environment in Python just for this. So now we're going to do a source space root EMV forward slash bin forward slash activate. And that activates the virtual environment as you see there that now precedes our prompt in the shell. So I'll clear this, the screen with a clear command. Let's do an LS just to see what's in here by default. We do see a requirements.txt, so we'll do a cat there, and we see a whole bunch of stuff that it needs. Now, I've ran through this a few times. This is not gonna install everything, but we'll do it anyway. So pip space install, excuse me, pip space install space forward slash r space requirements.txt. Anytime you're installing requirements, you need to throw that R flag or else it doesn't know what it's doing. So give this a second. It, again, it's gonna fail on some of the components there. We're gonna run through them manually. As you see there, we've got some errors. No worries. I did this a couple times and this is what I came up with. So once you're done with that, you're gonna find the uh, run file within the directory there that we got from GitHub. And we're gonna do a Python3 space run.py. Now this is gonna fail, but every time it fails, it's gonna tell you what component that it needs. So here we see that it has no module named torch. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a pip install torch. We're gonna repeat this, I think it's like seven to 10 times. So if you want, you can kind of maybe fast forward this a little bit, but just note everything that you need to install. I did fast forward some of this because torch alone takes a long time to install. So I try to trim it way down for you guys. All right, so again, Python 3, run.py. This time we are missing ONNX runtime. So we're just gonna repeat this process. Pip install ONNX runtime. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and try to run the Python run.py again. And you'll see now we're missing YAML. Now one thing to note here, guys, not everything is the same as far as what it calls out as what we need to pass to install it. So just simply Google install YAML Python. And right there, it's gonna show you PyYAML. So instead of typing in pip install YAML, you're gonna type in pip install PyYAML. I believe we do this for one or two more packages. Uh, again, it's just a quick Google search. All right, so we're gonna repeat that process. I won't talk through all this, but follow along and note everything that I am installing. And when you're running through this, you're also gonna get these prompts. So again, just follow along with the same process, play a little music here, and we'll come back when everything's installed.
All right, that was the last module it was missing. So this time we're gonna run Python 3 space run.py again, and we're gonna see it start downloading everything that it needs to launch this application. Now I'm gonna show you after it launches the initial time, it'll go a lot faster the next time. So let's let this work through all the stuff that it needs to download. And we should see a browser tab open up with Roop Unleashed. And there it is, just like clockwork. All right, like I said, the first time takes a while. I did fast forward that a little bit in the terminal, but just know that the second time will be a lot faster. So we close the browser, we hit control C to exit that instance, and then we can just run Python 3 run.py again. And this will only take a second, boom. And now Roop Unleashed is up and going. All right, so let's go ahead and cancel this out again and note that we have our virtual environment running. You can do a deactivate anytime you have a VEMV or a virtual Python environment running. And I just wanna show you that um, even exiting out of the terminal, deactivating the virtual environment, it's still gonna be a lot faster than that first time when you launch it. So you do need to come in here and get into the directory again and then activate that VEMV or that Python virtual environment with the command source space and then the name of the environment, which in our case is root EMV, forward slash bin, forward slash activate. And again, we have our root EMV virtual environment activated. So now if we do Python three space run.py, we will again have our Roop Unleashed browser tab pop right up here. So as you see, it didn't have to run through and download any of that stuff again. Now that's all fine and dandy, but I'd way rather have an icon on the desktop where I just double click that baby and it runs. So that's what we're gonna do next. We'll deactivate that guy again here and we can close the terminal and we'll just start from scratch and we will go ahead and build out a bash script first that launches that application. It'll even activate our virtual environment. And then we'll go and build a desktop icon that runs that bash script. So let's CD back into our root unleashed directory and we'll do a touch and we'll make a bash script called run underscore root dot sh, which is a bash script. And now we can use nano, and we really could have did that to start with. It'll also create it if you run nano, but touch creates it, nano's to open the editor. And if you guys ever made a bash script before, you know that you have to have a specific line here to start. So you're gonna do a hashtag, exclamation point, forward slash bin, forward slash bash. That's basically what tells it, hey, this is a shell script or a bash script. And now we're gonna run some commands. So CD space, and then we're gonna go ahead and put it into the correct directory, which in my case is home, IT Unicorn, AI, Roop Unleashed. And I'll just open up a terminal here uh, just to verify that is the correct directory and I have everything spelled out. Of course, Linux is case sensitive and everything like that. So let's just go ahead and verify that with a tab completion. And it is AI forward slash Roop hyphen Unleashed, all lowercase. All right, so the next thing we need to do is do a space there with a couple of pipes, and then we're gonna do an exit. So that'll exit out of there after it CDs to that directory, and then we are going to do a source, root EMV, forward slash bin, forward slash activate to activate the Python virtual environment. So we're in the correct directory, we have our Python environment, virtual environment started, we'll do Python 3 run.py. Control O to write that out, hit enter, Control X to exit. All right, let's validate that with a cat. So we'll cat that shell script and we see that our bash code looks correct here. So one more thing you have to do with any bash script is add the executable permission to it. So use chmod or chmod and then do a plus X. So we're adding the executable to it, run underscore root dot sh. So that's adding the X permission to that shell script. All right, so now let's CD into our desktop directory. And now we're gonna work on that desktop icon. So you can do a touch again, and then we'll create the name of that desktop icon. And in Linux, they end with dot desktop. So I named mine roof hyphen unleashed dot desktop. And then we'll use nano again, and we'll get in there and we will modify the desktop icon. Now, if you've never done this, it's a lot different than Windows when you're creating desktop icons. Uh, once you do it once though, it's pretty easy to replicate it. Obviously you can copy and things like that. So the first thing you do is put in square brackets, desktop space entry. Pay attention to case here, guys. The next line is gonna be name equals, and this will be what it shows on that desktop icon. I just named mine Roop Unleashed. So comment, you can put whatever you want here, but I say start the Roop Unleashed application. Next line is going to be execute or EXEC. Now this is the important one. You're gonna tell it where to go and what to run. So we're gonna point it to that directory, home IT Unicorn AI Roop Unleashed, and it's gonna run that bash script that we just created. After that, we will go ahead and create a 
basically a placeholder for now because that another video later in the series I'm going to show you how to create custom icons and apply those but you're going to do icon equals and I'm just going to use a baked in one called utilities terminal so it'll look like a terminal icon and then we're going to say terminal equals true so it'll launch a terminal and then type equals application all right last but not least you're going to do categories equals utility and end that with a semicolon once you've got all that in there go ahead and do control o and that'll write that file out hit enter to validate the name and then control x to exit the nano and then we can cat that file out just to look at it and make sure we don't have any typos looks good to me one thing we do need to do just like we did with the bash script is add that x permission so it's executable so chmod plus x and then we'll type in the name of our desktop file once you do that, you can see right on the desktop, it updates the name and it updates the icon. So it looks like a terminal again. Later in the series, I'm going to show you a really cool trip to, trick to get some sweet icons to go with all the nice tools that we install. All right. So there you go. You double click on that icon. It does everything for you now. So we don't have to worry about navigating the command line, activating any virtual environments. We are good to go. It does all that right from that desktop icon, which calls that bash script. So you created some auto magic. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a quick example. So I just got a quick little video clip here from Happy Gilmore. Uh, <laughs> he's laughing, he's having a good time. Good for you, yeah, laugh it up, enjoy your night. <laughs> oh man, I love that movie. Quick disclaimer though, the copy failed, so I didn't get the whole clip. So we'll see that when we do the conversion and the volume's kind of low as well. So just take that into account. Uh, that's on me. Just again, this is a quick demo. All right, so one thing you do need to do, I did it ahead of time, is do a sudo apt install ffmpeg. When you do the deep fakes with Roop Unleashed on a video, you're gonna need ffmpeg installed. If you're doing pictures, that's not necessary, but you will need it for videos, so make sure you do that first. All right, so take your video file and put it over here in the target, and then take your source picture, the one that you wanna apply or deep fake onto the video. That's me, my gorgeous face there. <laughs> And now what you can do is scroll through the video by changing the frames and find one that's a good shot of the picture, I mean, of the face. And then you can say, use from this frame. So there you go. You see Adam Sandler and you see me. Now there's a whole bunch of tweaks we can do. This could be a whole nother video. Uh, but if you read them, some of them are self-explanatory. If you do multiple steps, it is going to take longer. I do recommend you doing some post processing there. And then once you're happy with those settings, go ahead and click on start. Again, we can go over those settings more later in another video if you guys want to know more about them. There's tons of information out on the internet. Just know that as you crank things like steps up and everything like that, it will take longer. So I definitely fast forwarded this part because on a CPU only, no GPU, it will take some time to do a video. What it does is it goes by frame by frame, looks at every single frame and says, let me see that face, let me swap that face. And it even auto rotates as it goes through, like if the faces are tilted or anything like that, it does a really good job. And if you see that it missed any steps, you can crank the number of steps up and then run it again. It will take longer, but it has more attention to detail when you do that. All right, we'll come back when this is done and we'll see what it looks like. All right, we do see the message that it says file ended prematurely. Again, that's because that copy was not 100% successful. I brought it over from my personal desktop onto the virtual machine and something just didn't quite go right there, but I got some of the video. All right, so your output will be at the bottom of the bottom right of the browser of Roop. So let's go ahead and click play. That's not too bad when you consider this was CPU only, guys. Now, if you wanna do images, it's the same exact process, but it's gonna be a whole lot faster. And when that output file is done, there's also a little button down there to download it if you wanna download that and put it on Facebook or YouTube or whatever you're trying to do with it. Obviously, uh, think about what you're doing. Don't do anything terrible. <laughs> Use this responsibly. But this is a really fun tool. Uh, you can make deep fakes of yourself, your friends, whatever. It's just really cool. But again, don't be a jerk with, you know, with this tool. Don't do anything bad. All right, guys, let me know what you thought about that. 
I know a lot of people want to be able to do this stuff locally and they've never seen a solution that can run without a GPU. Well, now you've got one. And this is just the first of a whole lot of cool stuff that I'm going to show you guys on creating the ultimate artificial intelligence Linux operating system, which is going to be running on Linux Mint, obviously all open source, all free, all local, not sending anything to Bill Gates, big tech, anyone like that. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe, hit that thumbs up, and stay tuned because there's more on the way. Again, this series is going to be a game changer, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Until the next one, hope you all have a great day.